This is Akash Vani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on ISRO's launch of INSAT 3DS for accurate weather forecasts and natural disaster warnings. The participants are Professor Annapurani Subramaniam, Director, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, and Rajesh Lekh, anchor. The Indian Space Research Organization successfully launched next generation meteorological satellite INSAT 3DS on board GSLV F14 from Sriharikota. Professor Annapurni, a warm welcome to Akashwani. Thank you. Professor Annapurni, what are uh, the importance factors that you can attribute to the INSAT 3DS, particularly when it comes to weather prediction? Considering that how much we can see from above and predict and uh, give early warning to natural disasters, uh, it's a very important mission from that point of view. And we can also see that uh, the weather forecasting and disaster warning has become extremely important for our survival. INSAT uh, 3DS is the fourth uh, weather satellite which will be active for 10 years and it will gather data on several aspects of the atmospheric uh, changes. How will it also help in the search and rescue missions? You mentioned about the prediction of weather extremes and other challenging uh, situations of the atmosphere, like fire, rain, snow, or any other disastrous yeah. uh, situation. How will it help yeah. in search and rescue missions? It has got uh, like you know four payloads on board the 3DS. The first is the Imager one, which actually carries out the multi-spectral Imager. Then the Sounder payload, which has got 19-channel Sounder payload, which is it will provide information on the vertical profiles of the atmosphere, temperature, humidity, etc. The SA and SR a transponder that is called the satellite aided search and rescue, which is basically a relays a distress signal and alert detection from the beacon transmitters for search and rescue purposes with global receive coverage in the UHF band. So this is exactly what it is going to do uh, when there is a disaster and helping with the rescue operations. The weather satellite will enable the organization to image the entire country every 15 minutes. Uh, that's a big achievement. Exactly. It's a, You can also imagine the amount of data it's going to create. Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> it's a beast and uh, it's also going to generate uh, and look at major geophysical parameters, uh, right? So all those things are going to come and uh, it's going to look at, you know, the fog, the rainfall, snow cover, snow depth, fire, smoke, aerosol. It's not only the data, it is the data products because data can be quite overwhelming. So data products as well as the applications which are sitting on top of it also are extremely important. You're very right, uh, Professor Annapurni, in saying that the data that you will receive is going to be quite overwhelming. For the benefit of our listeners, if you could tell the huge amount of data that you will be receiving in which form will you be uh, utilizing it and which other organizations in the country are going to benefit from it? So this mission is basically driven by the Ministry of Earth Sciences and uh, uh, its uh, other departments such as the India Meteorological Department and the, the Weather Forecasting Division and the uh, Tropical Meteorology, yeah, IATM and the Oceanography, etc. So these agencies and institutes will be using these data to provide important weather forecasts and meteorological services. But then uh, they already have the applications as we know that it is on not only the imaging system or the mission which is actually to be put in place. You already have the ecosystem to <clears throat> handle that much of data and produce data products and applications. So right now we can see that, you know, the amount of uh, infrastructure we have built up and predictive capability we have built up of the couple of decades, you can clearly see that, right? So a number of institutions which are looking at, you know, the atmospheric, the land layer, as well as the ocean. So all these which are part of the landscape are all involved in the utilizing the data and uh, weather forecasting. I would like to seek your comment on what the mission director has said about uh, the GSLB, which is always referred to as a naughty boy and has become an obedient boy and proved it with a majestic Lift off. Would you elaborate on this statement? Yeah, so the GSLV, which is basically the geostationary launch vehicle, it is actually a difficult uh, the launch vehicle. It's okay. basically because 
it is uh, it's lifting off a huge amount of weight you see pslv is our the polar satellite launch vehicle which lifts to the low earth orbit uh, satellites as well as smaller ones which is not very heavy pslv is fine but then if you want to have the heavy lift off you need a large uh, the ability to lift off so that is provided by gslv now it took some time for uh, the country and the organization to actually come out of the issues it faced so it was a naughty boy because it used to work properly in the lab we did face a couple of failures but now i think we have overcome all those issues and gslv has been uh, doing extremely well and with this indigenous cryo stage engine so this lift off is also like very heavy mission so this uh, you know, lift off mass is about you know 420 tons so it's extremely heavy so it just performed very well so it's no more a naughty boy it's actually well behaved so if it, if it is that well behaved then do you think we're going to be having a heavier uh, machines in coming days uh, it should be but the problem is it's also quite expensive okay so uh, one need to figure out like when any mission is planned for that matter one actually has to have uh, a reasoning why which kind of a, a launch vehicle is ideally suited for that particular mission so if you really want that uh, that weight to be lifted up and put in space it's not only put in space but also operations and everything right it's a complete package thing so one has to justify all this we know that we are doing much uh, economically cheaper than with respect to the other countries but still it is expensive so one has to justify it and Uh, the requirements it goes through several layers of vetting and uh, approvals and recommendations etc so if it is required definitely this will be needed and of course india coming up as a space faring mission with a lot more launches planned etc so this capacity building in in terms of launch vehicle is extremely important and is indeed very heartening that this will give a boost to bigger lift off uh, launch vehicles the insat 3ds is being tracked by the control centers at brunei and uh, port blair and uh, as you mentioned this is the heaviest satellite launch that we have done and uh, the good news is that it is smoothly progressing in all uh, stages and the target uh, has been achieved perfectly so in the coming days uh, how do you see what kind of other progress uh, can uh, india see in this field the country is waiting for the series of gaganyaan missions right yeah. so that is going to come in the next few years i think ahead we'll have a, a nisa launch will also take place as an isro nasa program that also for earth observations that's at the different uh, aperture sensors radar that's also earth observation satellite the instrument is ready it's, i think it will be launched uh, a few months from now but uh, with respect to gaganyaan and also future missions to moon and also um, maybe more planetary missions etc they require a lot more complicated things a lot of lift off you can already see that the other countries are trying to even do a cargo how do you if you want to send something they can actually send it through a cargo is that possible so different things are being thought through so multiple ways of addressing the requirements are to be looked at and uh, there will definitely be a requirement so there going to be no dirt for requirements okay. so we need to ramp up our skills our expertise as well as our capacity to meet the requirement professor anapurni very important question that comes to my mind is about uh, insat 3ds monitoring and uh, you know prediction of course we talked about how is it going to integrate with other satellites or uh, ground based systems to provide comprehensive weather and disaster monitoring in general for any scientific purpose when you look at you need the current data but you'll also be using data in other wavelengths as well as other data available from ground sources and other wavelengths etc for that matter in general i'm not a, a atmospheric scientist but i'm an astronomer but even in astronomy we look at uh, data from one particular source or one particular mission or one particular wavelength we always have to combine the data with other wavelengths and other sources to effectively predict or you know model certain things so in this case also this is very important but i am sure that they will have to add and augment whatever they have already and uh, come up with a, a proper model so each and every data is important and uh, the cadence is also important 
but at the same time equally important are the model predictions the model themselves and the uh, data from other sources so how does uh, insat uh, 3ds complement or collaborate with other international space agencies or organizations which are involved particularly in weather forecasting and disaster management this kind of images spectral image imaging data can also t- say where exactly one can go and do fishing right with this information is actually given uh, at short notice i mean at regular intervals to to fishermen so that they can effectively use their you know time and energy for good use so i remember uh, some a few years ago some other country asking for the data because they also uh, had the capability of the satellite to cover that region as well so they actually bought the data and used it for their purpose as well even if in the case of looking at uh, where the fishes are or looking at disaster management it is very important that the capability is built up and if it is able to help or you know aid another country who is going through uh, difficult times it's very important to do that and i think isro and other countries are definitely engaging in uh, these kind of collaborations and as i mentioned the nasa india the desynthetic aperture radar the instrument called nicer is going to go up and that's a major collaboration between nasa and isro that's mm-hmm. also a synthetic aperture to look down it's an earth observation satellite your key priorities or the focus areas for isro in advancing its uh, contributions to global weather forecasting and disaster preparedness efforts isro started small and then now it is actually going leaps and bounds providing this very important information etc i'm not able to say what can be the vision because it's a very important purpose and uh, particularly when we are going through this climate change and you know the drastic events which are happening at short notice and these are going to increase only so we may have to have increase the cadence or things like that or a little uh, more a uh, better way to actually image and uh, say that as well as at the same time a modeling efforts also have to be improved because data can say what exactly is now and you can data will also say what it was the previous week but can you predict right so that also the capability also has to be built up so it's a team work including isro the uh, the mission the instrument on board these satellites as well as the scientists working on the ground and the predictor so and as i said the data products and the applications so all have to be matured to gear up to challenges which are lying ahead so where do we go from here it's looking bright in the sense that we have all these capabilities which i said are important verticals they're all developing properly so all that we need to say is that okay what is actually causing it we can control it also that can also come in but i'm not the one to say that but uh, eventually as a scientist if you can predict and tell our people that you know this are the what is happening and maybe we can even say that these are stricter measures required because these are vulnerable areas where you should not be investing you know in making something so it doesn't cause any multiplying effects we have to be careful so these kind of things which can come and put into practice we will be more self reliant and more uh, better instead of facing a, a disaster situation and then you know trying to recover from it we should try to avoid such a situation so professor anapurni subramaniam once again we would like to congratulate you on the isro's successful launch of insat 3ds and thank you very much for being with us thank you so much you were listening to a discussion on isro's launch of insat 3ds for accurate weather forecasts and natural disaster warning the participants were professor anupurni subramaniam director indian institute of astrophysics and rajesh lekh anchor This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani. You can listen to it on our mobile app News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel News on AIR Official. You may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks@gmail.com or WhatsApp on 9289094044. ये है आकाशवाणी और आप सुन रहे हैं कोल्ड हंड्रेड पॉइंट वन पर